So as we get started, we're just going to kind of review some of the vocab that we've been talking about. We talked about a central angle yesterday. You may or may not remember this. It's kind of like this diagram here. A central angle is an angle with its vertex on, at the center of the circle, and its two sides are radii. Perhaps you remember hearing that odd word yesterday. Your central angle in this example is ABC. That point B is the center of our circle. And the sides of our angle are the radius, or rather two radius, which we call radii. And like I said, for example, angle ABC. That's our central angle. Now this is a question that you already know the answer to, just by what you might think. The sum of all central angles in a circle is? Would someone like to take a guess? Because you already know the answer. What do circles add up to? How many degrees are in a circle, ladies and gentlemen? Three hundred and sixty degrees. Now one of the neat things that I'm going to teach you today or show you is that the measure of the arc formed by the endpoints of the central angle, the measure of the arcs that we've been finding are actually um, congruent to the measure of the central angle. Let's see. The measure of the arc formed by the endpoints of a central angle is congruent to the central angle. So how does that fit in? Well, yesterday we were mostly talking about arcs. We really focused on minor arcs, semicircles, major arcs. We already had the arcs. Today we're going to have central angle measures, and we're going to translate those into arc measures, which really doesn't go anywhere or do anything. Because if I want to find the measure of arc AC like I do here, the measure of arc AC, which is here, is just equal to the 84 degrees. That 84 degrees, that is the central angle, basically comes out and is equal to my central angle. The measure of angle, or I should say the measure of arc ADC. I'll do this in a different color even. The measure of arc ADC, we're starting at A, going to D, but going through, sorry, we're going to C, but we have to go through D. So from A, we go to D. And then we're going to end at C. I'm trying to find the measure of that red arc there. This is where that sum comes in. I'm going to put a star by this because this is a key fact that we don't want to know. Today you're going to see that there are two key staple angle measures or arc measures that we want to remember, 180 and 360. Now the entire circle should add up to 360 degrees. We already know that AC is 84. So if I want to find the rest of the circle, what do I need to do? It turns out all I need to do is take that 84 and subtract from 360 degrees. I'm going to double check that because I don't trust myself right now without a calculator. 360 degrees minus 84 is 276. So the measure of arc ADC is 276 degrees. We're going to use these facts to find missing measures. Yesterday, I just wanted to introduce you to arcs and kind of get you finding the measure of a single arc or a combined arc. Today, we're not just going to find the measure of arcs. We're going to find the measure of arcs when we are missing pieces. So this is what you're going to see. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in a little bit more. That way we actually have it, have a good look. Perfect. So as you look at number one, we want to find each angle and arc measure. And most of these are going to be arcs. Uh, in number one, I see the measure of arc ST, the measure of arc RS, and the measure of arc SRT. But the problem here is that 
we're missing pieces. The only thing I know is that this is 122. Now, before we even get started, allow me to remind you, that's the central angle. That SQT there is the central angle, and the central angle is equal to the arc. So ST is also 122 degrees. We also want to find the other pieces that are missing, and we can do that. Remember, one of the key things that we want to remember is that a diameter helps form a semicircle, and a semicircle equals 180 degrees. Allow me to show you this. RT there is a diameter. It cuts the circle in half. In other words, everything here should equal 180 degrees, which actually helps us out. And everything over here should add up to 180 degrees. All right. Well, the neat thing is we actually just gave ourselves the measure of arc RT here. We need to know the measure of arc RS to have all the pieces. So if everything over here, if from R all the way around to T equals 180, I just need to do 180 minus 122. And that's going to give me 58. So knowing that RT is a diameter can really help us. Basically, this cuts the circle in half, which tells me everything above should be 180, everything below should be 180, and I can subtract. 180 is the total. Not that we need to go and add these up. If we did add all three of these up, they should add to 360. That's how that fits in. So now we're back to where we were yesterday. We just need to find the measure of each individual arc. First and foremost, ST. ST has two letters, which means it's the short way. And that goes from S, which is here, all the way around to here. Well, that's the 122. Secondly, we need to find the measure of arc RS. Well, once again, two letters. RS is the short way. So RS is right in here. That's the 58. R to S is 58 degrees. We also need to find the measure of arc SRT. And I'm going to go ahead and get rid of quite a bit of this stuff. That way we can actually see a little bit better. I love drawing on these diagrams to kind of help us see what we need to see. Sometimes it needs to go away. SRT, notice that there are three letters. And think about where you're starting and where you're stopping. SRT means I'm starting at S and I want to end at T. All right, well, there's two ways to go. There's the short way and the long way. Well, this has three letters, so it should be the long way. R needs to be in the middle. So from S, I need to go through R and go around to T. The measure of arc SRT is going to be equal to the addition of those two angle measures. I have the 58 here and the 180 here. That should be 238 degrees. Number two, remember how diameters are, like I said, so important? I keep saying that, and I can't overstate the idea that diameters are going to play a key role for us. In this particular diagram, it's a diagram that you're going to see a lot of in this chapter. I'm going to let you know right now. We have two diameters. I have the one from MK, and I have the one from J to L. That splits my circle into four pieces, but pieces that are nonetheless equivalent. Now, the only thing that they gave us was this 21 degrees. But remember, this is a central angle. It's not an arc. But the central angle and the arc are congruent. So I can move this 21 out 
very easily. Now, I need to find the measure of each other arc. And to do that, I need to use the fact that we have a di diameter. Remember, diameters like MK, cut the circle in half, and we are going to have a bunch of semicircles. Well, within those semicircles, we have parts that have been broken up. But the semicircles themselves still add up to 180. So from M all the way around to K, for instance, should equal 180 degrees. Well, I already have 21. If I want to know what the measure of J to M is, which is the missing piece, I just need to do 180 degrees minus that 21. That should be 159. Now the neat thing about this is that we can use diameters again to find the next piece over. Or you could use, sorry, you could use vertical angles. Either one doesn't matter. What I want you to realize is that JL forms another diameter, which is also equal to 180 here, and we already have 159. So I can easily turn around and do 180 minus 159, and what will I get back? 21. If you really wanted to, you could go do the math and figure it out again, but thanks to the vertical angles or the simplistic math that we've already done, we should know that the last piece is 159 degrees. So when you have a diagram like this, it's just a matter of subtracting the first piece by 180, getting the 159, and then everything's basically a mirror. Now that's because of the diameters, and this only works in a circle that's been broken up into four pieces like this, with two diameters. But once we have that, finding the measure of every angle and arc is easy. Now we're back to what we did yesterday. The measure of arc JK comes first. JK is this little piece up here. From J to K, the short way. It's 21 degrees. Then we have the measure of angle J and M. Let's see. Ooh, angle. That's an angle. I can't forget that part. I said it and then glanced over because we were working with arcs for so long. The measure of angle J and M starts at J, comes into N, and goes out to M. Basically, it's this angle right in here. Now, like I said, or I keep trying to remind you, the angle measure is equal to the arc. So all we have to do is come out from here and look at this arc. This arc is 159 degrees, right? That's the measure of this angle. It's 159 degrees as well. The central angle is equal to the arc. If I try to find the measure of arc KL, which is the third one, KL is the short way from K to L, which is going to be this. We've already found that. That's 159 degrees. We also need to find the measure of arc JKM. Well, let me see if I can't get rid of a little bit more here. Because Jay's kind of covered up. All my drawing probably should... Let me just get rid of that. There. Now, we want to find the measure of arc JKM. Same ideas. We're starting at J and we're ending at M. But K has to be in the middle. Hence is why it's JKM. So from J, I need to go through K and advance around to M. For this particular problem, look at that. We have three parts. We have 21, 159, and another 21. So we need to add those together. The measure of arc JKM, I'll put over here, is going to be equal to the 21 plus 159 plus 21. And I can add those up easily on the calculator. Let's see. 21 plus 159 plus 21 is 201 degrees.
Yes. Go for it. Last but not least is the measure of a arc MKL. Well, let's see. Right, I'll do this in a different color. We're starting at M and we're ending at L, but K is going to be in the middle. Watch out for that. M, K, L. So from M, sorry, from M, I want to go to K and then end up at L. So this time around, I'm trying to find this red arc, which is almost all the way around except for the 21. This is where we can actually use a shortcut method. So far, all I've been doing is adding up all of the pieces that are a part of the arc. Now, when I look at this, I have to remember, a circle adds up to how many degrees? How many degrees are in a circle? Three hundred and sixty degrees. Three hundred and sixty degrees are the total of a circle. Since I'm only missing one piece, I can take that total, three hundred and sixty degrees, and subtract twenty-one. That will give me three hundred thirty-nine degrees. Any questions so far? Okay. The key point, the key highlight for today is finding the missing pieces using diameters as well as the total of our circle, which is 360. Moving on to our next page. Now we've got a circle that's been broken up into five parts, so we have to find the missing pieces. One thing I'm going to do real quick. Since the arc is equal to the central angle, and this central angle is 87, I'm going to go ahead and move this 87 outside. Now, again, a key piece is going to be the diameter. We find the diameter, we find a semicircle. And a semicircle equals 180. I'll tell you right now, in this diagram, there are two diameters to find. Remember, these are chords that go through the center of the circle. One diameter is from W to U. The other diameter is from S to V. This is a difficult part to find, and I understand that. That's why I'm trying to help you out with this. Focus on one diameter at a time. If you look at SV, for instance, let's start there. I'm going to start with SV. And if I look above it to the right, notice that we're missing two different angles. I don't know what these are. You don't have to put the question mark, really. If you want to, you can. But the idea is that there are three parts to this top. I don't know two of them. I can't find those. If I look down below, there's one piece that I don't know out of two. I know that SW is 72. I don't know what WV is, but I do know that the total should be 180 degrees. So if I know that the total is 180 degrees, if I know that the total is 180 degrees, and I know that this piece right here is 72, I can subtract that 72 from the 180 to find the measure of that missing arc, and that's 108. So we pretty much have to become accustomed to using these diameters to help us find the missing pieces. It's a trick that I can't always, I can't really teach most effectively. It's a tough thing to teach though, this, this finding diameters and using them. This is like a puzzle that you have to work around, you have to turn it, spin it, look at the circle in different ways. Now that I know that this is 108, I really can't work above still, but I can look at the other, I can look at the other diameter. The other diameter, WU, looks like that. I can work above and I can work below. It doesn't really matter. 
Let's look below, because we just found this 108. Let's use the 108 to find another piece of the puzzle. If we look below the circle and use the 108 that we just found, you'll notice that I have another semicircle, which adds up to 180 degrees. And if I know that that adds up to 180 degrees, and this is 108 degrees, I can do subtraction. 180 degrees minus the 108 we just found, well, guess what? That's going to be 72. That means, as it turns out, this UV or VU is 72 degrees as well. Now, whether you work above or, let's just work above. Let's just make it happen. We just use WU to help us find that 72 degrees. We can work above WU like this. I can work with this semicircle here as well. Again, semicircles add up to 180 degrees, right? Well, in this semicircle that I've color coded pink, we already have 72 and we have 87. I need to find this last missing piece, which is the question mark. Well, we know semicircles add up to 180. So what we can do is we can take that 180 and subtract the two arcs that we do have, namely the 72 and the 87. That's going to be 180 minus 159, which is awesome in and of itself because we actually know the answer to that one. We did it earlier in one of our problems. It's 21 degrees. So we can use diameters to fill in all the missing pieces and then find the arc measures from there. Arc and angle measures. Really, we're just going to focus mostly on arcs. The measure of angle UXV, though. Let's see. UXV. UXV. I'll take this back. UXV is this central angle here. But all you have to do when you're looking for the measure of that angle is just look at the corresponding arc. The corresponding arc is 72 degrees. It's right off. We also need to find the measure of arc ST. ST, that means the short way, S to T. Oh, look. It's this blue arc up here that I just drew, 21 degrees. We already know that. The measure of arc WV. WV has two letters, so that's the short way. So from W to V, I just work my way around. Ah, that's 108 degrees. Next, I have the measure of arc TW. TW has two letters. That's the short way. So I'm going to find T, which is right here. I'm going to find W, which is right here. I'm trying to find the arc there. That's going to be the 21 and the 72. So 21 plus 72, that's 93 degrees. I'm going to get rid of all the drawing for the last arc, because the last arc is a major arc. The last arc is the measure of arc TVW. TVW. So T. We're ending at W, and we have to have V in the middle. So from T, we're going to go around to V. Then we're going to go on to W. So the final arc that I'm trying to find is that big blue arc right there, which includes 87, 72, and 108. The neat thing is, once again, we can actually use our diameter and our semicircles to help us with this. Because we said earlier that WU was a semicircle, right? Well, that's 180 degrees right there, this whole thing. And that means that all we have to do is add 180 plus 87. Now, if you prefer to go the old-fashioned way and just add 108 to 72, that's fine as well. Just add those up. But when you add those together, you should get 267 degrees. I get it, not the most, not the most fun lesson that we've had. I, I get that. 
We're just filling in the blanks, trying to find the missing pieces. Does anybody have any questions? <laughs>